afternoon, wherever you are. It's uh, 12.30 p.m. Eastern. Um, I'm Hank Bellevue Ryan. Welcome to First Chapter Fun. We're live here on Instagram and here on Facebook on this election day in the United States. Um, and I hope if you're not here, I hope that's because you're out voting. Um, we voted by mail. I'm Hank Bellevue Ryan here in Boston, where I hear the election voting booth lines are long, and that's great. And so many people in Massachusetts have already voted, and that's great. So I hope you have voted where you are, whether it's in the actual voting booth or by mail or by drop off or however way that you can manage it. I think a lot of us are in the United States on First Chapter Fund. Are most of us here in the U.S.? Um, on First Chapter Fun Way in and let us know where you are. And I am so pleased today to tell you that I can see the comments um, right here on Facebook. I can see the comments. I see Kimberly and Shannon and Jamie. That's wonderful. Hi, everybody. And Kat Law, um, Catherine Lowry, and Annie, and Lisa is here, and Lisa and Sarah. This is great. I love seeing you all so much here. Hannah Mary McKinnon and I are here every Tuesday and Thursday at 12.30 p.m. ET to bring you another fabulous first chapter of a book here on First Chapter Fun. I see Carol, I love when Facebook allows me to see the comments. It's just such a treat. Um, and here on Instagram to welcome, welcome, welcome. Hannah Mary McKinnon is here. We've already chatted this morning about our various internet disasters. And apparently at Hannah's house, all is not well in internet world. Um, maybe it'll be fixed. Uh, and we were trying to decide whether you all have any idea um, whether it's Tuesday or Thursday, let alone whether it's going to be Hannah or me talking to you here on First Chapter Fun. It sort of came out that Hannah was getting Tuesdays and I was getting Thursdays sort of by the immutable law of taking turns, um, but we really never planned it that way, did we, Hannah? So I'm glad to see Hannah on Facebook. Hi, Daisy. Hi, Glenny from San Diego. And um, Daisy in Austin. Yeah, I'm glad I can see the comments too on Facebook. Hi, Shelby. Take the day off to read is here. That is so nice. Take the day off to read and vote in the United States. It's interesting. So many companies are giving their employees the day off today or at least some time um, to go vote. So um, Yes, democracy, and we re we rely on that. We rely on that. So, but Hannah Mary McKinnon and I, my partner in fictional crime here at First Chapter Fun, um, we're here every Tuesday and Thursday, no matter what's going on. Um, Hannah started this, as you know. If you're here for the first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. We're so glad to see you. We love having new people, and we love um, our veterans, Shannon and Catherine and Glenny and Rose is here, that's great, and Catherine and Sherry, and <laughs> look, Daisy and Carol, then Jamie and Kimberly, um, what would we do without you all? Um, you are the fuel that keeps us going. So we are so happy with you all here at First Chapter Fun. Um, today, Shannon is saying I voted by drop-off, that's great. Um, however you did it, we voted by mail. I'm, uh, <laughs> I'll am i quickly tell you the story. Um, so Jonathan and I got our ballots by mail. I mean, I rely on the mail. The mail is good every year. Um, do you know this? Every year in the United States, two billion, two billion with a B, Christmas cards go out. So I thought, what should be the problem about delivering? I mean, families send hundreds of Christmas cards a year, hundreds per family. And so if each household has two, you know, the post, the post office can handle that. Anyway, we're not getting political here. So we decided, Jonathan and I decided that what we would do is that, hey, Cynthia is waving. Hey, Shelby. Um, what Jonathan and I would do would be, I would vote by mail, send my ballot in by mail. And then we would drop Jonathan's off um, at City Hall and see who's got um, checked in first and who's got uh, counted first, but then in the end, we both voted by mail because by golly, we believe in the mail. And so, but then we babysat our ballots. You know, you can go online and see if your ballot has been received. So we babysat those darn ballots all the way to the clerk's office. And so they're there and they're being counted and we're happy. Um, Shannon says, my parents mailed theirs. I did a drop off. Debro, hey darling one, hey Debro, says, I dropped off my ballot a couple of weeks ago. Nancy's saying, me too. Ali is saying, great. Shannon, easy peasy ballot drop off. Um, Hey, Debro, I can, she says, I can never remember how to access First Chapter Fun on Facebook. Yeah, 
just go to first chapter fun groups and you have to join but i know you obviously join so we're all here and it is all working and you are so lucky today because we have a really terrific book do you know skin deep by sung woo the book is skin deep by sung woo and we are so happy that he is here today i'm not sure whether he'll be on facebook um or on instagram so we welcome him here's damyanti biswas that's fabulous we read her wonderful book, um, You Beneath Your Skin. Is that what it's called, Damianti? Something like that. Now I'm getting it mixed up with Skin Deep. And Jen Jumba is there. Um, Jen is saying, I stood in line 90 minutes this morning outside. Yes, um, because you're in Ohio, aren't you, Jen? Isn't that where you are? Yes, of course you are. Uh, Catherine says she voted absentee. Michelle, nice to see you here on Facebook. Well, the roll call is growing and growing and growing. And we are so thrilled that you are all here today and have voted you know that's the only thing about uh, voting by mail is that we there wasn't a little i voted sticker um in the absentee ballot and i miss wearing my little i voted sticker i've i used to put it i put it on my phone on the back of my phone so every time i took a picture of someone it said i you could see that it said i voted and it finally after months and months just sort of peeled off um, yes, Shannon is saying a new, hey, Sun is right here on Facebook, right here on Facebook. That's great. Welcome, Sun Wu, who wrote this fabulous book. Now, I will admit to you that I did not know Sun Wu until I read this. And I am so happy that um, First Chapter Fun has also introduced me to a new author. This is, this is a terrific book, full of heart, and it's witty and funny and emotional. Um, and timely and contemporary and absolutely great. Sherry is saying she's going after work tonight. Yay. So you are all going to love Sun Woo and you are all going to love his book. I promise you. It's And look at this gorgeous cover too. So elegant and even a little, little retro. Um, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous cover. Um, so welcome to the episode 104 of First Chapter Fun, our election day uh, episode. And welcome, we're glad that you're here. Catherine saying, in Wisconsin gave me the sticker in my absentee ballot envelope. Yeah, uh, I felt like making my own little sign saying I voted. I guess I could still, I guess I could still, yeah. But, so Jen Jumba is going to be happy to know that the ado is over. I know Jen Jumba loves the ado, but welcome, welcome, welcome to all of you this morning. I'm so excited to see so many of you. Hannah Mary McKinnon up in Canada with, with her internet on its last legs. Um, and I uh, really, gosh, we love you so much. It's just great that you're all here. And uh it's such a joy to see you all, even though it's just your names, we can um, we can envision you all. And so, uh, yeah, the cover is great, Hannah says, and loves some sense of humor. Yeah, the humor is so, well, you'll just have to read it. You'll just have to read it. I'll read you a little bit, and um, then you can read the rest yourself, I know. And Jen loves, Jen Jumba loves the ado. <laughs> we love the ado as well. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about Sung Woo. And here's another interesting thing. Um, you know, they talk about author voice and how that voice is something that is difficult to uh, describe, but you know it when you hear it, it sort of comes through uh, in, a, in, a, in an author's writing. So even Sun Woo's biography um, shows his voice through and through, and I'm going to read it just how he sent it to us. Sun Wu says, I've had the good luck to have published short stories and essays in the New York Times, Penn, Guernica, and Vox, plus three novels, Skin Deep 2020, Love Love 2015, and Everything Asian 2009. That first book won the 2010 Asian Pacific American Librarians Association Literature Award. I even got to walk up to a podium to deliver a speech, Sun says. I live in Washington, New Jersey with my wife and two cats. Up until this January, we also lived with this lovely dog of ours, Ginny. We still miss her every day. Now, see, I told you you would love him, and who wouldn't love a bio like that? Um, so thank you for that, Sun. That is lovely, and I feel like I know you a little bit better just from those five lines of bio. Hannah is telling me to remind you, don't forget, uh, Hannah's in my chat on First Chapter Fun, Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 
Um, do we need to sign up for this? Asks Lynn. No, you do not need to sign up for it. You just need to show up on Instagram and Facebook at 7 p.m. ET on Sunday, and you can ask Hannah and me anything. I mean anything. We can ask Hannah how for some of her recipes, because I know she's cooking up a storm and probably will be baking today since her internet is uh, on the fritz. Just got to hope her um, oven isn't on the fritz. Great. So yes, Shannon says great bio. So let me tell you a little bit about Skin Deep by Sung Woo. And it's available now from Polis Books. So run right out, not right now, as Hannah always says, run right out and get it. Not right now, but run out and get uh, Skin Deep by Sung Woo. Here is a little bit about what it says on the back cover. Korean-American adoptee Siobhan O'Brien has spent much of her life explaining her name and family to strangers. But a more pressing problem is whether to carry on the PI agency that her dead boss unexpectedly left to her. Easing into middle age, Siobhan would generally rather have a glazed donut than a romance. But when an old friend asks Siobhan to find her daughter who has disappeared from her dorm, the rookie private detective's search begins at Llewellyn College. A women's institution of higher learning in upstate New York, Llewellyn, for the first time in its 200-year history, has opened its doors to male students. Fringe group, the women of Llewellyn, are furious, but their ex-fashion model president declares they have little choice due to financial shortfalls. But if that's true, where did she get the money to build a brand new science center? And why is it under 24-7 surveillance by the town cops? As Siobhan delves deeper into the search for her friend's daughter, she encounters politely dangerous men in white turtlenecks, vegan cooking that might kill her, possibly deadly yoga poses, and a, and a young woman named Cleopatra who's got more issues than the National Geographic. This first in a new series introduces an endearing P.I. heroine in the tradition of classic female detectives like Sue Grafton's Kinsey Malone and Sarah Paretsky's V.I. Warshawski. Warshawski. I better learn how to say that since I'm interviewing Sarah Paretsky on Sunday and it would be bad if I got her heroine's name wrong. Anyway, in the tradition of Sue Grafton's Kinsey Malone, and you can see all those books right behind me right there are pretty much all Sue Grafton books, so that's fun to see. And Sarah Paretsky's V.I. Warshawski. So readers will not be able to put it down. I completely agree. So let me read you a little bit of Skin Deep uh, by Sung Woo. I'm going to read you, it doesn't matter because you don't, it doesn't matter how many chapters this is, but just so you know, this is the first four chapters. The sh chapters are short and great. So here we go, chapter one through four of Skin Deep. My assignment this morning was Dr. Henry Michelson, who was getting out of his white BMW with a box of donuts and two cups of coffee in a paper tray, treats for his girlfriend and son. He walked across the courtyard of the apartment complex with a faint smile. Crouched behind a prickly bush, I trained my 300 millimeter zoom on his unsuspecting face. Click, click. Taking photographs of people in secret is capturing a kind of innocence, which is ironic because more often than not, the images serve as confirmation of guilt. As Michelson disappeared through the building's entrance, I caught a whiff of eggs and bacon. My stomach growled. Surveillance makes the tummy grow fonder for food, that is. I slipped the camera into my backpack and made my way to the shiny diner on the corner. Autumn chill had firmly descended here in upstate New York. It's the time of year when I feel like I'm either wearing too many layers or not enough. There's no in-between. Today, I was a wool scarf away from being comfortable. On the weekends he had his son, Michelson wasn't supposed to have overnight female company, yet here he was, thinking he was being smart by hiding out at his girlfriend's apartment instead. Michelson might lose custody of his boy, and I felt bad about that. In the three days Ed and I had been casing him, he took good care of his son, taking him to the movies, the park, the mall. But he wasn't paying us, his pissed off ex-wife was. A bell on a string rang when I opened the door of the Tick Tock Diner. A rush of warm air and the buzz of eaters greeted me. 
I'd passed by this place a few times since their grand opening last month, but hadn't had the occasion to stop in. It didn't look all that different from its former incarnation, Time to Eat Diner. Like before, a gigantic round clock behind the counter grinned at me with oversized googly eyes. The new owner didn't want to spend money to redecorate, so they kept the same temporal theme. Just you, miss? the host asked. He was fat and jolly and was wearing a pretty obvious hairpiece that made him his head resemble a Brazilian nut. Just me, I said. He led me to a cozy two-seater booth by the windows. The faux leather upholstery was cracked along the edges and taped at one corner with black duct tape, but it was still cushy and comfortable. Coffee, two eggs over easy, rye toast, home fries. If I could eat breakfast every meal, I would. I cleaned my plate before the waitress had a chance to refill my cup. Hungry, were we? She said. Very, I said, and handed her my credit card. She took it and was about to step away, but stopped. See Ob Han? She asked, reading my name off the card. That's what it looks like, but it actually sounds like Siobhan. It's Irish. Like your last name, O'Brien, the waitress said. You're Irish? Why wouldn't I be? I asked. The waitress laughed. I'll be back with your receipt, lassie. Chapter two. Nestled in the valley between the Catskill Mountains, the city of Athena is a picture of fall perfection from the second week in October until election day. Some people prefer the flowers of spring full of promise and warmth, but I've always been attracted to the quiet fires of fall, the final burst of color before winter. On Buffalo Street, a bearded crooner busked by the water fountain. I threw five dollars into his guitar case and clapped when he finished his song. At the end of the block, I entered the white brick building and rode the elevator to the third floor. I was already excited for my plan to come in later this week and surprise my boss, Ed, with a fresh coat of paint on the door of our office. Ed was not a fan of surprises, but I figured this was not a bad one, since I didn't plan on changing the color or anything. It was a heavy wooden door with a large translucent square window, the name of the firm stenciled on the glass, Ed Baker Investigative Agency. The door was painted black with a dark gold trim, a reassuring combination of professionalism and class. Friday was my second anniversary. Ed probably didn't even remember or care if he did, but I wanted to express my gratitude. Instead of hiring someone with more experience, any truth be told, he'd taken a chance on me, a laid off newspaper reporter who wrote restaurant and movie reviews and occasional human interest pieces, neither Woodward nor Bernstein. Our office wasn't much, a Keurig sitting on a wide filing cabinet in the back and three desks, one for Ed, one for me, and one for Stacy, our part-time bookkeeper. Ed had the biggest one with two wooden armchairs in front, of the client, in front of it for clients. Behind him was the only window and he often stared out at the city below and the verdant landscape beyond when he thought through a case. I placed my purse on my desk. Good morning, good, mo good morning, I said. Good with Michelson, I said. Got the photos. Ed's chair was, as usual, facing the window, and his head was tilted in an angle that suggested he'd nodded off. Ed? I walked over to his desk. Slumped in his chair, he clutched his left arm with his right hand. I placed my fingers on his wrist, but I already knew I wouldn't feel a pulse. His skin was cold. The expression that remained frozen on his face was somewhere between a grimace and a smile, but only for the next 36 hours. Everyone knows about rigor mortis, but few realize that the body goes slack a day or so later. The way Ed had grabbed his arm suggested heart attack. He was on medication for high blood pressure and for type 2 diabetes, too. He was not the healthiest person I knew. A few crumbs of his half-eaten donut were embedded in his mustache, so I brushed them off. Now that my assessment of the scene was complete, I stood next to him with my hand on his shoulder. I saw what he saw last, the bronzed beauty of the mountains in the distance, and I wept. Chapter 3 one of the most popular stories I'd written when I used to be a journalist with the Athena Times was a profile of the funeral home in town. And in the week I spent with the Lesters, I saw a dozen bodies rolled into the basement and sat through three services. 
I witnessed cremation, embalming, and of course the preparation for an open casket viewing, which meant dressing the body and applying makeup. You'd be surprised at the amount of primping the men receive. In many cases, it's more than women, because women tend to take better care of themselves and look fairly fabulous, even dead. They'd done a nice job with Ed, even shaped his unruly eyebrows. In black suit and red tie, surrounded by folds of white silk, he looked at peace. I'd never seen Ed in any kind of formal wear, as his dress code for work was a button-down shirt and a pair of faded jeans, so it was odd to see him prim and proper. It was almost like it wasn't him at all, but of course it was. The Lester family owned both Athena Funeral Home and Athena Ambulance Service. The oldest joke in town was that maybe they took their time to get to an emergency so both of their businesses would benefit. I must have heard that joke a dozen times during my visit for my newspaper piece, and yet each and every time, Gwen Luster smiled, shrugged, and said, we're here to serve the citizens of Athena during their greatest times of need. I was glad she was taking care of Ed, because there was no one else. Ed had a brother in Akron, but he was blind and couldn't be convinced to travel for the funeral. That was it for his family. His parents were long gone, and so were an uncle and aunt, and he'd never married. Including me, only six people attended Ed's service. I knew them all, as three were recent clients, and the other two were Keeler, an Athena cop who sometimes helped us with our cases, and our bookkeeper, Stacy. I kept telling him to stop eating those Cinnabons for breakfast, Stacy said. But they're so good, I said, and that got her to do a half chuckle, half cry. Gonna miss the big guy, Keeler said. I miss him already, I said. The service took less than 15 minutes, and that was including me going up to the podium and muttering a few words of remembrance. I hadn't prepared anything, just said the usual things, a fine man, a great boss, etc. I'd only known him for a couple of years, but I'd spent more time with him than anyone else in the room, probably combined, and arriving at that fact made me sadder than anything. Stacy, Keeler, and I went out for drinks afterward, but my mind drifted after a few rum and cokes. What the hell was I going to do now? I'd spent a couple of years as an apprentice to a private detective. I just got my license. The guy at the bureau had let me take the exam early, thanks to a favor he owed Ed, but there was so much to this business that I knew nothing about. I could find another job with another agency, but which? I remembered a friend from a long time ago telling me that a shitty job with a good boss was better than a good job with a shitty boss. For the last two years, I had it great on both fronts, and now I was about to have neither. Did I mention I turned 40 a week ago? I don't care what they say, 40 is not the new 30. 40 is two drinks maximum, a bulky knee, and lower back pain. Chapter 4 When I arrived at the office the next morning, a man in a suit was waiting outside the door. Robert Schaefer, he handed me his card. I was Ed's attorney. My condolences. He took a seat in one of the client chairs, so I sat behind Ed's desk. It was weird to see the office from this vantage point. My eyes kept drifting to my own empty desk. Ed's was just enormous, one of those steel jobs from the 50s. It had probably taken a team of weightlifters to move it in. Miss O'Brien, Schaefer said, did you hear what I said? I apologized. Schaefer said he understood my distractedness, but that didn't temper his impatience. He now spoke louder and slower than necessary, making me feel slightly stupid. Ed left the firm to you, not you specifically, but to whomever was his partner, or if not a partner, then assistant. You qualify as the latter. I own this agency? Yes, but I'm afraid it isn't much of an inheritance. The only asset Ed had was his car, worth about 4000 at book value. There are presently no sizable debts, so the business is not leveraged in any way, but there isn't much left in the operating bank account. Looking at the average rate of outflows, there's enough for the agency to run for three months if there is no new business coming in. I brought some paperwork with me, but please don't sign anything now. Hire your own lawyer and have them review it. I didn't know what to say. 
It had been just three days since Ed's passing, and this was the last thing I expected. Schaefer must have noticed my bewildered expression because his voice softened a notch. You can also close up and liquidate. I estimate you may not you may net somewhere around twenty thousand dollars. It'd be like a severance. I nodded. Schaefer rose, shook my hand, handed me a paperclip sheaf of papers, left. I turned around and stared out the window. It was an overcast day. Everything seemed gray and muted. The phone rang. By reflex, I answered it like I always did. Ed Baker Investigative Agency, Siobhan O'Brien speaking. Kim Shebong, the voice asked. It took me a second to realize that the caller was not announcing her name, but my own. Can you just see how wonderful that is? What a great setup in every way that is, how everything is explained, how everything is logical, how we completely like Siobhan, how we know um, that she doesn't exactly look like Siobhan O'Brien, but we don't really know what she does look like until the caller seems to know who she was in another time of her life, Kim Shebong. So um, Sarah Smiles is saying, I'm definitely getting this book. Yeah, I mean, I think that it is really special um, and the voice just really sings. Um, and so Skin Deep, this is something that we are very happy. Um, I'm very happy, Hannah and I are very happy to read to you this morning. I love when I find a new book on First Chapter Fun. It's, it's meant for you to find a new book, but this is what this is a new one for me. Yeah, Ali is saying here on, on Facebook, Ali is saying love her. And yeah, we do. You know, we do in so many ways. And if you're an author, let me just parenthetically say, if you're a writer and you look through those four chapters for foreshadowing and character building and backstory um, and emotional understanding, um, it's all just there it's all just there so i'm i, I love it uh, <laughs> thank you son he's saying can i have you read all my books hang not kidding um my complete pleasure i love this book so skin deep by sun Wu. Uh, this is episode 104 of oh look what i just saw on my on my ipad hmm. i got this at least okay so uh thank you sun Wu for giving us a wonderful episode 104 of First Chapter Fun. Now, episode 105, 105, will you be here Thursday? You are going to, oh yes, Hannah. Okay, starting, I forgot, I forgot. Thank goodness Hannah is here because what would I do? Giveaway, giveaway, giveaway. There's gonna be a giveaway. Don't listen to this Instagram people. Oh, do, because then go right over to Facebook and enter. There is, Sung is giving away one of his books, two of his books um, on Facebook today. The problem with it is when you leave a comment on Instagram, it vanishes. So it's really hard to do a giveaway on Instagram. On Facebook, it's easy because when we put the video in media on Facebook, and uh, the comments stay. So it's up on Facebook. You can add a comment. Some will pick uh, a winner or two, one or two. Is it one or two, Sun and Hannah? Anyway, we'll, we'll pick a winner or two from Facebook. So you Instagram people, and I see all of you here, hop right over um, after this, go to Facebook. If you haven't joined First Chapter Fun, the group on Facebook, well, now would be a perfect time. And then enter by leaving a comment on Sun Woo's reading um, to win a copy of Skin Deep. Thank you, Hannah, for reminding me. All right, <laughs> this, we're a team. You know, what would we do without each other at this point? So thank you. And thank you some for uh, donating the books. Okay, <laughs> Thursday, when the world will be very different, won't it? Um, but this book will still be terrific. Isabella Maldonado's The Cipher. Isabella Maldonado's The Cipher. We will read from that on Thursday. It's a chilling thriller about a woman who escaped from a serial killer, became an FBI agent, and now realizes that he is on the loose again, and she is the only one that knows enough to track him down. But is he tracking her down as well? And that is Isabella Maldonado, the cipher, which we will read to you right here on First Chapter Fun, Thursday at 12.30 Eastern. And until then, stay safe, Stay kind, and we love you so much. See you next time.